So clearly fracture healing is both mechanics and its biology and, and um, and external fixators allow us to manipulate each of those to the needs of the patient. And, and so in this uh, you know, entire course, we focus on how do you, how do you make those decisions? Um, and, and once you've made those decisions, then with your hands, how do you, how do you implement them you know, in your application of the fixator? So consistency and predictability of, of end results, I think, was uh, something we wanted to achieve because we'd gone through it the hard way and uh, really didn't want everybody else to have to go through the same learning curve. So hopefully the course kind of jumps you past some of those difficult learning experiences that uh, all the older faculty members had who started the course. There's no way that, that you can train uh, a skill set like this just in lecture. Um, you know, there's tons of hands-on here. And, and each lab builds upon the previous lab, and each bi uh, lab builds upon the content that was discussed in lecture. So, so this one here, we're doing biomechanics. Well, we had a great lecture on biomechanics, but there's no substitute for actually feeling what the fixator is capable of and, and, and perhaps what, what different frames are incapable of doing. So this is an opportunity you can't get in, in a practice setting where, where there's no way with a live patient you can test the vulnerabilities of a given frame, and that's, that's what this lab is all about. External fixation is such a versatile system and such an economical system, and no system's great for everything, but you can probably do more things with external fixation in an economical manner than any other type of fracture fixation system. And so, especially for general practitioners that sometimes are limited in, in resources, financial and equipment and whatever, it's, it's a really versatile thing. And so if they get that experience, they can start simple and work their way up. One of the things I, I love is that we've now added the soft tissue modeling and the importance of how do, we, how do you do mapping relative to joint surfaces and fracture lines. Um, I, I think that was a significant improvement.